I've never been more scared in my whole life. I thought I was going to die. I thought about my family the whole time. We were waiting to know our fate. Well, thankfully, they let us in. I am alive. I am one of the lucky ones. So let's talk about uh, immigrants, refugees. We're here with Carol Stern, President and Chief Executive Officer of an extraordinary organization, UNICEF USA. USA. Um, what we just saw. Mm. Why know, is it so important for us to not just watch it, but think about it? You know, it hits home to me because I am the child of a child immigrant. My mom came to this country at the age of six, or her brother was four. They came without their parents. It was the only way they could have their lives saved. So I grew up with that story, and I see the, their faces on every child. And today there are more kids on the move than there were in that post-World War II period. More kids sleeping on rocks tonight that should be in beds. And these are our children. They're not the, you know, Somalia's children, Syria's children, any place else's children. They're our children. And as we put up the UNICEF information for people to find out more and find a way they can help, what is our responsibility to those children? Our responsibility is to, to be the grown-ups. You know, World War II ended, we said never again, and I believe we meant never again, and we meant never again for all people. And so it, it's our responsibility, again, not to look at the borders they happen to be born between. They, they don't get to pick where they're born. And to be the grown-ups that we are, and to ensure that every child on this earth gets the opportunity to grow up and be whatever it is they're meant to be. In the midst of the rhetoric, the heightened often nasty, dangerous rhetoric around those who come to this country and refugees from certain countries mm -hmm. for certain reasons, people believe. The level of empathy, compassion, and caring about these children seems to be very different than it was just a few years ago. Am I wrong about that? I think for many, um, but you know... Most? Some. You know, you, first of all, Eunice, if we have no politics, we deal with kids, and kids are not making the political decisions they are the victims of political decisions. But and if they so, come from, sorry for interrupting, if they come from certain countries and certain political leaders in our country say, not those kids, you say? I say that children should not be viewed as anything other than children, and they need to be seen as children first, not immigrants, not migrants, not refugees, not asylum seekers, they are children. And so when people say, you know, I see that kid, that kid has needs, that kid's a potential future terrorist who could do harm to us, you say? I say the best way you can refute that is to give that kid an opportunity, ensure he gets an education, feed him, clothe him, give him water. What's a better way to prove to a child that life is worth living? How many displaced children are we talking about? Right now, there are roughly 50 million kids on the move at the moment. 50 million, million children. Define on the move. move. Meaning that they have been, they're out of their homes. In whether, places like... In places, obviously, like Syria, Syria you know, which the is obvious, the right. obvious one. But you're going to find kids on the move throughout Latin America right now who are fleeing violence in their communities. You're going to find kids in all parts of the earth, in Africa, in Asia, in all parts of the earth, who are 24 million have been forcibly removed from their homes. And if people wanted to help, what would they do? What could they do? Well, what could they do? They could do a number of things. First of all, you know, to address the point that you started with, they can stop the rhetoric. They can look at these children as children, look at the faces, see who they are, see them as people, not as numbers and not as any of the titles we put on them, but as children and teach our own children to see them that way. You can embrace those who are in this community. We are a country of immigrants. We are. Yep. And I wouldn't be know, here if it weren't for my grandparents coming from Naples, Italy. Exactly, exactly. My husband's from Italy, okay, my, my own family from Austria. We are a country of immigrants, and we need to embrace that children who come here don't come here with any other purpose than to find safety and security and the promise of what America has to offer. What is it? Um, it's, is it called Kid Power? Kid What's Power. Kid Power? 
All right, so Kid Power is remarkable. It's like my favorite program that we're doing. You know, there, while we have all these kids on the move, one in four children in America is technically underactive. This is the first generation that might actually have a lifespan shorter than their parents. Mm -hmm. You know, they're underactive, it's the obesity crisis, it's all of the various things that are facing kids, heart disease, et cetera. And we've gotta get America's kids healthy and active. But simultaneously, one in four kids around the world is malnourished to the point where if we don't do something, that the likelihood of death is there. So I kind of looked at one in four and one in four and said, you know, there's gotta be a way to put these together. Mm. And I wish I could take credit, I can't. I gave this to one of my staff, a guy by the name of Rajesh Anandan. I said, come back, give me an idea. And he really came back with Kid Power. So at the heart of Kid Power is we created a low cost fitness band. This is a Kid Power band and it comes in UNICEF blue, let me, let me like hold it this up. one. Is it? Yeah, that's it, UNICEF blue, but it you also comes right. in a Star Wars version that's black and it has an, an orange one and a green one. And in any case, we created that because no one wanted to make it for us, so we started a little startup in UNICEF and we created it ourselves. We give it away free to Title I schools where 75% or more of the kids are on some kind of food assistance program. How does it help? Well, the kids are challenged to walk 12,500 steps a day. For every 2,500 steps they walk, they earn a point and it lights up and it buzzes and I can tell you even as a grown up, it's kind of a fun <laughs> moment, you know, you get that little woo. And um, when they earn 10 points, we release a sachet of ready to use therapeutic food. It looks like this, RUTF. And we release this to a child who is severely malnourished. That's an empty bag, but. Um, and there's food in here. There's food in there. It's a peanut based paste. It's everything a child needs. Four huh. weeks of that will bring a severely malnourished child back to life. What is it like for you in this role at UNICEF? I mean, you were, you said, when you were a kid, what did you do for UNICEF? I trick-or-treated for UNICEF. <laughs> you did, didn't One you? in 10 Americans has exactly, trick-or-treated right? for UNICEF. Exactly, exactly. What is it like for you to be in this role and to know that in spite of the horrific conditions faced, particularly by children, facing children, that you are helping to make a difference? You know, I, How rewarding. it's an amazing job. You know, I took this job, I always say it was my 50th birthday present to myself and um, it has been a remarkable 10 plus years. Um, it just, getting to experience things I'd never thought I would. I hadn't slept in a tent since I was a Girl Scout, you know, so mm. that part's been, made my friends laugh pretty hard. But no matter where I am in the world, and I've had the privilege with UNICEF now to go to over 32 countries, um, kids are kids and they're really fun. And even when they're facing horrific situations, they will still make you laugh. I mean, they're just unbelievable. But we can help the cause. We definitely can help the cause. You know, I think that everyone can help the cause. I mean, financially, you can support the cause. It's going to take a number of dollars to bring education it's to dollars, all the kids. People can volunteer, can't they? People can definitely volunteer. With Kid Power in particular, right. you know, you can teach your child to be a global citizen, give them an opportunity to give back, because in addition to the classroom, you can buy a Kid Power band for your own child and download the app with the password and get right on the program as a family experience. Carol Stern, glad you got that birthday present. Me too. Uh, she is the president and chief executive officer of UNICEF USA, an extraordinary organization. I want to thank you for joining us on public television, Fios, or other platforms. Um, you're doing important work, and we need to be part of the cause as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Be right back right after this. Thank you. Thanks. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, Delta Dental of New Jersey, NJIT, PSENG, JAG Physical Therapy, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Choose New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.